Every day is spooky season day, so I'm still using my ghost glass, drinking homemade iced coffee, which is really coffee that I didn't finish this morning that I poured over ice and added <laughs> some creamer. Very fancy. Hey fiber friends, welcome to episode 13 of the Botanical Knitter Vlogcast. I'm Emily, I'm a knitter, spinner, sometimes natural dyer, but just for funsies, sometimes crochet or wannabe crochet, and I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota. You can find me on Instagram as the Botanical Knitter and on Ravelry as Botanical Knitter. Everything I talk about today is gonna to be listed in the video description below but I've been doing a pretty decent job on Ravelry and my project pages of capturing needle size that I use, size that I knit, any modifications, the yarn, all of those things. So if you want more details, you can go there. I'm mostly doing it out of pure self-interest because when I re-knit things, I think I'm gonna remember what I did and I don't. So this is for future Emily as well as all of you. Today, I am wearing the vest number three by My Favorite Things. I've shown this on the podcast before, vlogcast, whatever I am, <laughs> but I haven't worn it yet. I used, hi Harry, the corgi just walked in. If you can hear his little click, click, click. He just wants a little pat. Anyways, I used a strand of fingering weight yarn from Silly Goose, along with a DK weight strand from Knitting for Olive, and then a strand of Surrey, also from Silly Goose in the same color as the fingering weight, and I'm really happy with it. I wore this to work today. It's a button-down kind of satiny shirt with Athleta pants that kind of look like dress pants, but they're not, but they have like the stripe down the side and whatever. So this was my more casual look, but definitely I feel like doable for the capital. And that's that. I'll say before I dive into talking about finished objects, whips, acquisitions, yarny, fun fiber things, work has been challenging for me. Not just the pace, but like emotionally it's been tough. So I'm hoping that by filming today, it'll bring my energy up and it will remind me of all the things that are really good and fun and give me energy. And it'll perk me up for the rest of my work week. So we'll see what happens. My first finished object is the knitted ribbed hat from Pearl Soho or the classic ribbed hat from Pearl Soho. I used uh, yarn from a farm close to me, Driso Family Farms. It is, I think CVM Cordale blend or a marl. It is like so squishy, so soft. You can see where I ran out of skein one because I knit it longer than the pattern calls for. And on Ravelry, you'll see, um, I, I think I did 80 rows before I started the hat decreases. And it's for my husband. It is pretty stretchy and pretty warm. So I think he's gotten like one wear out of it because, is it because it has been unseasonably warm in Minnesota. I think it's like 60s this week, which is wild. And here's the decrease part. I think it turned out okay. Like it feels like intentional color blocking to me. Chris is happy with it, so I'm happy with it. I've been knitting this off and on for like two months now, and he was like, "Hey, hon, next time you finish that, when you finish the sweater, can can I have my hat?" And he's been so patient. So good way forward to me. All right, my next finished object is The Winter Crop by Jessie Maid. And this is part of the Boucle Buddies cozy make along that Nicole from Professor Pearl and I are hosting. I talked about this on the last episode. I cruised through this and I think it turned out really nice. So I knit, I can't remember what size I knit. I think I knit a size two or three, a medium or small. I went down a needle size because I didn't use bulky boucle. I used a DK weight boucle. So that's why I have a pretty airy drapey fabric, which I'm a-okay with. I held the collar, the cuffs, and the hem with Bella Filato Surrey in this really pretty pale pink because I thought it pulled out the warmer parts of the brown. The boucle is from Muse 2320, which is a yarn dyer here in Hastings, Minnesota. 
and I'm real happy with it. I didn't do any sleeve decreases and then I knit it probably two inches longer than the pattern called for. So still cropped, but not quite as cropped. The sleeves really grew when I blocked it. I had originally cast them off right about bracelet, like lower than bracelet length, right? Shorter than bracelet length. And they're like fingertips now, but I'm okay with it. This was intended to be like a cozy at home knit, but I've definitely worn it out because it is so soft and squishy. Thoughts on boucle? Is it my favorite yarn to knit with? No, no, it's not. It is hard to read the stitches. It's hard to read your number of rows. It's hard to pick up under the arms, but I got through it. Like it's, it's not like it was not doable. Like I have a finished object that turned out really nice and looks nice under the arms. Um, and the sleeves are generally the same length. What I'm a little disappointed in myself in is that I have a row counter from Twice Sheared Sheep and I didn't think to use it until sleeve number two to keep a good accurate track of my rows and my sleeves. So learn from me, friends, use your row counter and then use your eye, your the light bulb stitch markers. I will use light bulb stitch markers to track my sleeves, but I don't use a row counter because on wool, like a non boucle it's pretty easy to read your stitches and count, but no. I will knit with boucle again. I have one full skein left of this Muse 2320 that I think I'll do a Manhattan hat out of and hold it with Surrey, this really pretty like moody brown tan uh, Surrey I have from Knitting Lizard that came in a mystery pack, but I'm not rushing to knit with it, mostly because I have too many things that I am doing, including two test knits two test knits. We'll get to that. And uh, yeah, I need a break from boucle. There's still time to join the Cozy Bou Boucle Buddies Cozy Make Along. We're going till April 10th. It is uh, Wednesday the 13th. Nope, Thursday the 14th. Whoa, I don't know what today is. Help me. Uh, so there's still time to join and it's fun. You should, if you finish, post on Instagram, use the hashtag, hashtag Boucle Buddies Cozy Make Along. I'm gonna drop in some videos or like a clip at the end of the photos of the current Boucle projects I've seen. So use that hashtag so I can keep showing off everything you all are working on. And then be sure to post in the Ravelry thread that Nicole made, cause that's how we're tracking prizes and we have some good prizes. All right, that's enough of Boucle. My next finished object is the Pim Pom Shawl by Laura Penrose. This I have definitely talked about in the last episode. I am in love. I'm in love. It was like anytime we're doing garter for a very long period of time, it gets a little, eh, I could be done with this. But then you get the row of bobbles, which I'm not the best at bobbles. They don't pop as much as many others, but that's like a user error. And then I loved making the scallop edges. I think this is such a finished, polished looking shawl. I wore it to the Capitol. I've worn it to walk the dogs. Uh, I wore it running errands, plant shopping grabbing beer, like I've worn it a bunch, especially cause it's been like 50 degrees. So I don't want to wear a coat cause I run warm, but to throw this over my shoulders keeps me warm in the wind. It has this really nice detail of the solid stitch line going down the middle. My colors are Monarch. This is Monarch on the Moon Sisters. I can't moon something. Look at my Ravelry. Farmer's Daughter Fibers. It has a little bit of Stellina in it. I don't know if it's coming through. It's just like the subtlest coppery shimmer that I love. And then I used Knitting for Olive Dusty Rose for the contrast color. A couple of test knitters did this in all one color. They did it in a solid with a variegated yarn, variegated with a solid. Like all of the colors are really great. All everybody's finished objects looks nice. I liked mine because it's like a little moody monochrome ish color family moment. Uh, would recommend 10 for 10 would recommend, especially if you want like 
TV knitting, reading knitting, like this works because it's a pretty, it's easy to remember the increase section. And then this just goes quick. Like it, it's, you have to pay attention, but it goes super quick. All right, that's my third finished object. And then the fourth finished object uh, is my February socks that I finished in March because that's what I do. These are the High Desert Socks by Larkspur. Lark, Lark, Larkspur Knits. I can't quite remember. Aren't they cute? I thought they were kind of ugly at first because of my color combo, but I'm happy with them now. They were obviously my Valentine's. I don't know if it's obvious. It's obvious to me. They were my Valentine's Day socks that I finished in March. This is a sock set from the Kinetic Knitter. It was um, their Valentine's Day update from 2023 that I finally knit with in 2024. And then I pulled from Stash for these Stellina shimmery bits for the cuff and the heel. I knit an adult medium on the needle size of size three, um, and they're still kind of tight, which is surprising. I love DK socks. I actually like how they fit on my toes a little bit better than fingering weight. So I'll probably do another pair of DK socks soon because they're great for hiking too. But these have been cozy around the house. And what I like about this pattern, I don't block my socks because I'm lazy. These hold their shape really nicely because of the ribbing. So yeah, that's my socks. I cruise through FOs, but there we go. All right, time for some whip chatter. My first whip that I'll talk about is the classic by Spashrico. I feel like this is the never ending whip, but it is so different for me to spend this much time on a sweater. That truly is no pressure. The only downfall is that by the time I finish this, it's going to be warm and I can't wear it. So I'm kind of thinking of I'll tell you, let me show you. All right, my classic is in this adorable bag from That Crafty Little Fox. It's books, it's green. I mean, what else do you need? And since we last talked, I finished, oh, sorry. So loud, Emily. I finished sleeve number one and I'm almost done with the second sleeve. Isn't it pretty? Every time I look at it, I'm like, girl, finish this. All right, here's the sleeve. I did no decreases, and as of now, it is bracelet length. I love twisted rib. Everybody else is always like, I hate twisted rib. I don't wanna knit twisted rib. I love twisted rib. I think it looks so neat and nice, and I love the width of the cuff. So I have one row of twisted rib left and then I bind off. Used my light bulb stitch markers to track my sleeves and then I ended up buying a half skein. I have plenty of yarn. You know how I thought I um, if you I thought I was gonna run out of yarn because I'm a doomsday knitter. Everything is worst case scenario at all times. I have plenty of yarn. I still have one full skein of Surrey and probably a full skein of the fingering weight. I'm using Explore Knits and Gnome Cottage fingering weight and Surrey are the same color. So I will pick up here, probably do another inch in the body and then I'll split for the front and the back. The back hem will be a little bit longer than the front. Question for you, should I, because I have a lot to knit, and I really want to start spring knitting because winter is basically done. Never thought I'd say that in March, but winter is basically done. Do I finish the sleeve and just let it be on cords until the fall and then finish the hem front and back? And then I'm going to let it go. It's not going to be sitting in my whip drawer bothering me like it's just in time out until I can wear it. Or do I just finish it slowly over the next couple of months, even though I should really be putting time into other things that are more seasonably appropriate slash test net deadlines? What would you do? I'm not one to let things linger. Well, sometimes. I'm not one to let sweaters linger. This I'm loving, but it's gonna be too warm. What should I do? 
So that is whip number one. Whip number two is a test knit. It is the small fry scarf from Samantha Guerin. I am a third of the way through. I am not get engaged because I'm using hand spun, which is fine because I think it's good to show patterns in hand spun for us hand spinners. I spun all of this except for this yarn. This all is a Cormo sampler set that I got from Rhinebeck in 2022, 2023, I can't remember, not this year. And it was just a one ounce of each color. So my plan is to fade it and then do the rest of the, you know, do the bulk of it in this darker color, which is from uh, a dyer and mill near me, and then weigh it out and then do the same decreases when I'm at this side of the other end. My hand spun was like pretty decent. It's not the most, sorry, it's not the most consistent hand spun I've ever done. And it's definitely heavier than sport weight, um, but I really wanted to use the pattern for my hand spun. And I think Sam has been pretty flexible test knitter on gauge and things like that, especially when it's a scarf and not a garment. So yeah, it'll be a cute little neck scarf that I wrap around. I know they're all the rage right now. Um, so I love that. That is due the 25th. I'm going to a knitting weekend with some friends and I'm saving this for watching trash TV while drinking because I anticipate that's the direction we're going to go on Saturday and this is will be a good project for that. I'm not not enjoying knitting it um, but I am also like I would rather be knitting a garment right now like a top or a sweater um, but once I'm in the flow I like it. Uh, I'm just going to call this episode that crafty little fox episode. I think that's right because this is the little bag from Jessica. All right. My third whip is a new one that I cast on as part of the Lento knit along that my local yarn shop Dandelion Fiber Co is hosting. I don't think I used my, showed my yarn combo in the last episode. This is what I'm using. It is Le Petit Lamb's Wool from Biche Bouche. Did I say that right? I don't know that I did. The colorway is candy. It is unicorn magic. And I'm pairing it with Snowfall on Surrey from Knitting Lizard. And it has the softest bits of like yellow, green, pink that you can kind of see. And I wanted it to be an iridescent dream and it is. I am really happy with how this is knitting up. Isn't it beautiful? I'm knitting a size three and I went down a needle size for the ribbing and for the stockinette body. I just made it through the raglan increases and split for sleeves and now I am on the body. This class is meeting or this knit along group's meeting every Thursday. So I wanted to get through the increases in sleeves for tonight's meetup so I can just knit in the round and hang out with everyone. But I just, can we just have a moment for this fabric? <sighs> I love it. But what I really wanna talk about is the project bag it's in. I should just say, I'm not sponsored by that crafty little fox. I just really love Jessica's bags and the quality. And we all know I love project bags and there's a lot of makers that I love, but this was the first crafty little fox bag that I bought. I bought it at Flock last year and then my dog destroyed it. She, she destroyed it. Took out a good chunk of it. The cord was gone, the handle was gone. And I messaged Jessica and was like, well, Here's what my dog did. And she offered to try and fix it for me. So I mailed it to her and she just sent it back. And I love it. We've called it my Frankenstein bag. So this was the original fabric. 
uh, I think the handle was black too on the original, or maybe it was brown, I can't remember. And so she patched it with this piece, with this piece, patched it here, patched it with this pink, and then added a whole new lining, which I love. I am obsessed. Fix the cords. She's a queen. I cried when I saw that my dog had destroyed the bag and which is really weird. Like she's never touched project bags before. I was shocked and I was so sad because this is my favorite project bag. Um, and Jessica fixed it for me. And then she sent me some goodies with it when she repaired it. So just, I love this community. I know I always say it, but I'll keep saying it for as long as it's true, which is probably going to be forever. Uh, so let's, I'm going to show you, um, one more whip and then I'll come back to my crafty little fox moment. Oh, okay. My third whip, are we on three or are we on four? One of my next whips is the Muscle Burra by, is it you sold antique? I can't remember. Is that right? I can't remember. Anyways, I should know that since we all knit these all the time. My husband and I went and saw Dune 2 last weekend and I wanted some movie knitting and I didn't want to do a vanilla pair of socks. So I thought, lo and behold, the best, the best knit for any movie. So we watched Dune 1 and I got through the increases, like did the Judy's cast on or whatever it is, got through the increases and then did basically from here to here during Dune 2. My only mistake was that I knit a stitch marker into the knitting. It was like all the way down here. I just cut it with wire cutters. Very nice people were like, you should just drop the stitch and then crochet hook it back up. And I was like, that's four inches of too much work. So I just got the wire cutters out and went and cut it and it worked just fine. This is the Pi Day Yarn, 2023 Pi Day Yarn from Pigment and Ply. I can't remember the name, I'll link it. You'll see it on Ravelry. Um, Pigment and Ply is in England, I believe. And so it took a while to get this yarn, but I love it. Pie Day is happening right now on the Instagram. I don't know that I'm gonna order anything. Salty Blonde has a gorgeous yarn. Um, Knitting Lizard has a really nice French silk pie, I think it is. And then there was a berry one and I can't remember the dyer's name. It was a new to me dyer. But I was like, do you need another sock set? You know. Anyways, so this far in the muscle bra, I'm going to knit until I get to like 10, 15 grams left and then I'll do the decreases. I like my muscle bras longer because I like a thicker brim. And this is going to be for me unless it doesn't fit, which is likely to happen. Um, but this has been a good one to grab during conference calls or when I don't really feel like focusing on things and I can just knit in the round. And shout out to my newest stitch markers from Twin Mountain Handcrafts. I got the mint, their new mint resin that has like flex in it and they're all book themed. So it's kind of hard to see, but they make me real happy. And then this muscle bra is in my beautiful sister Heather Project bag. I'm using a US2 needle. Um, and I think I'm getting seven stitches for my gauge. So I'm knitting an adult medium on US 2s and that's my gauge. I'm proud of myself for remembering those random numbers. All right, back to that crafty little fox. So she sent me, when she sent my Frankenstein bag back, a new bag that she wanted me to test out for her to see if I liked it. And I do. It's a snap bag and I love snaps. Snaps, I think, are my preferred over cinch or zippers, um, which is why I like the Barley Pearl snaps are always my fave. And this fabric, she dyed, which is so cool. And then it has this really pretty pink accent. I love the breast snaps. My favorite part so far is that the handle is movable, rotatable, which makes it really easy to grab. I don't know. I just love that detail of it. It's got a wider base, which I like. And then the inside is this really pretty fabric. So this is like a moody little, little bag and I love it. Inside this bag is, oh, I forgot. She also sent me this one to try out. It's a little notions bag. It's the same kind of base, wider base, stands up on its own, has the cutest little fabric on the inside and is a zip. And I have fit a hair clip, stitch stoppers, uh, stitch markers, 
a pretty decent pair of scissors and my needles for my next knit. So this, it's so roomy. I could put hand lotion in here. I could put chapstick. It fits it all. So endorse. <laughs> so uh, hopefully she'll finalize kind of the project design and move forward with it because I think it's a goodie. All right, my next knit that I haven't cast on yet, so we're kind of moving into acquisitions, future knitting, is a test knit for Tori Knits, which I can't say no to Sam Gorin and Tori Knits. It's just like Tori NYC, I, Tori U, I have to. I am doing the Skyline T, which is the t-shirt version of her Skyline Pullover, Tori Skyline Pullover. It has like the most beautiful ribbing detail, short sleeve, and I am using this yarn. It is Gloam from ZZ Textiles on the Fingering Non Superwash base. I have three skeins. I got it in a mystery pack. The pattern in my size calls for um, probably about two and a half skeins. So I'll have a little bit of leftover, which is fine. I can crochet it or into my blanket that I keep planning for, but haven't started. Um, this is due in like a month. So after I finish, my knitting weekend priorities are finishing the small fry scarf and casting on my t-shirt. And that is the only knitting I'm going to bring with me to force me to do my deadlines and be a good test knitter and support the people I say I'm going to support, which I always will because I'm a rule follower. But that's, that's that. All right, let's talk future knitting. We'll continue the acquisitions chatter. And then I'll dive into just what's been happening in the fiber space, fiber community, and other things in my knitting adjacent life. First up, let's do future knitting. The other thing I really need to get doing or get to after I finish my test knits is a sheep camp pullover for my work colleague. I need to do that. I have to do that. Yeah, done, done. <laughs> acquisitions. Um, I, I thought of Sheep Camp because I did get some yarn in the mail from Treehouse Knits. I, I, I don't think I talked about this in the last episode. If I did, sorry, you're going to see it again because the yarn's that good, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. So I got three skeins from uh, Treehouse Knits of the Northern Lights Cannabis Indica on DK. This is from um, Lauren, I think I said that right, uh, Treehouse Knits Office Collection, which is my favorite show of all time. I got this on the organic DK because look at how yummy that color is. I mean, it matches my eyeballs. I'm a big fan. And this is gonna be a sheep camp for me with my hand spun. I have some hand spun that I think will be perfect. So that's one. And then I couldn't help myself but get more green yarn because welcome to the greenhouse. This is Shroop Farms on the Spruce Sock Base, which is 75% merino, 25% nylon, 436 yards. So it's a thinner sock weight. And I don't know what I'm gonna make with this. Probably some sort of tee, like with elbow length sleeves. If you have any recommendations, let me know. But I think it's just really dreamy. And then my other acquisition, was a fun one. I mean, all yarn is fun, so there's that. But this skein of yarn I picked up at Knit and Bolt, which is another yarn shop here in Minneapolis. They also have fabric and Fangirl Fibers. Emily from Fangirl Fibers was doing a trunk show. I've met Aunt Emily and spent some time with her at various fiber festivals, and so I was excited to see her in my hometown. Uh, she's over in Wisconsin. And I picked up this skein of yarn because it is moody and perfect and Cassian. So it's a uh, it's a little shout out to Akatar, and I love it. I love it, I love it. Isn't that really pretty? Like Speckle Queen. I don't know, this will probably be a pair of socks. It's 400 yards, 80% merino, 20% nylon. Em sold me on this because she's like, I probably won't dye that again. I was like, okay, I'll get this one. But like, just look at that top part. So good. So I ended up getting Summerly Knits new sock book and I'll probably pick out a sock from there and probably make these in the fall because they feel spooky, moody, their vibe. 
so that's the yarn i've been trying to be really good about not buying yarn and saving my budget for shepherd's harvest which is a fiber festival here in minnesota in may and then uh buying fiber from my friends who have like Teresa and Amy because they have gorgeous things so I've been trying to do more with them I signed up for Teresa at Get Ben's Farm her CSA so I will be getting I think a full share which is 300 yards of her mill spun yarn once a month which I like that has to be something like some sort of shawl or maybe a sweater and be like my Minnesota friend sweater so We'll see about that, but saving for that. And then I'm toying around with the idea of going to flock or sacred sheep. I haven't decided which yet. I also need to talk to Chris about it because that's my husband um, and bring him with. So we could do like a little long weekend trip together. He's really good about like doing yarn shops with me and being really patient and just like scrolls on his phone while I'm shopping. And he actually really likes to pick out yarn too. Um, so we'll see if he wants to come to the festival or he could just drop me off. So that's like in our maybe plans. We'll see. I loved Sacred Sheep last year. I loved Flock for the social aspects, but like Sacred Sheep was such a vibe. So I, I kind of would like to do that. Plus Chris and I adore Portland and it would be nice to go back there together because I felt weird not being in Portland last year without him. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to grab my notes so I remember to talk about all the things. All right, so I talked about the trunk show, I talked about my crafty little fox bags, I talked about treehouse knits, my acquisition there, fiber things, vloggy things. There's been, so two things happened. Yesterday for work, I had a meeting with our state attorney general to talk about some work that we're doing. And we were invited to tour his office like the whole AGO the attorney general's office afterwards because they have a gallery right now in the office and it's art that's been done by inmates and you could write notes to the inmates about their art and um it had a message and was just really powerful and then they had a booklet that accompanied each piece of art I think it's open to the public like if you go and ask about it I think you can go um but we were there and they were like oh while well, you're here do you want to see this and we were all like yes that's very cool we had some um partners visiting from out of state so I think that was cool for them to see how Minnesota operates I think that's such a powerful message like your attorney general has art from inmates that's all about reform in society and it was just beautiful so there was a couple of fiber art pieces, knitted pieces, and I took some footage of them because that really moved me. And the meaning and the message with each of the fiber art pieces was really powerful to me. Um, I wrote one of the artists a note saying like, I knit, thanks for sharing your fiber art with us and using your words. So that was really cool. Um, so I'll drop in some footage from that. And then my husband and I were on a long walk and we passed a tree that needs to get cut down and they had put a note that said can you help us show love for this tree with your knitted or crocheted objects and so slowly we've been seeing knitted items added to it and so I took some footage of that because that just makes me really happy and they're like let's show some warmth to this tree that's given a shade and, and life as it's like in the last bit of its life and I thought it was very very sweet Last week was Sunday fun day at the farm. We went to Amy's at Nash Lake. I brought my wheel down and carpooled with a couple of friends. And it was just nice to be with everyone, talking about fiber, seeing everybody's projects, spinning together, and just you know sitting in silence, listening to other conversations, having your own conversation, meeting new friends. Um, so I very much liked Sunday fun day. This next Sunday, Sunday the 17th, which is also St. Patrick's Day, is Brew and Knit With You. That's our monthly hangout on Sundays from 2 to 4. This month we're at Surly Brewing here in Minneapolis. They have reserved 50 spots for us, which is great. Breweries don't usually reserve space free of charge, but it's such a large brewery. And so if you want to come to that, you should. My Instagram has more info. Um, and that will be really nice. And then, like I said, I'm going to um, a cabin, like a lake house rental with a couple of friends this weekend. And we're just going to knit and wash, watch trash TV 
and spend time together and just relax. I know I personally need some time to not think about work and to ground myself with friendship and kind of that like bigger purpose, right? Like it's so easy during session for me to get bogged down into like this bill, what did I do? What did I do wrong? What am I not doing enough of? And like the frustration of feeling like it's not enough. <laughs> um, I laugh, but it's like really, it's really hard right now. And so that felt this, I'm looking forward to the weekend. The weather's supposed to be kind of chilly again, which makes sense because it's March. I know I've said that like five times, but it is so weird to have 60 some degree weather in March. All right, last time I say it, I'm over it, but it'll, we'll just be cozy and together and it'll be nice. So there's that. I don't think there's that much else going on in my life. There was a dis delay in my filming because I've just been all things work. I'm going to go visit my family in a couple of weeks in Wisconsin, which will be nice. My cousin had a baby. And so we're going to go say hi to the baby and welcome our newest family member. And I think that's it. Well, I think mission was accomplished. I do feel better after filming this episode. It's always nice to kind of get out of my head and talk about all things fiber with you. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. I hope wherever you are, you are well, and I'll talk to you soon.